The following presentation discusses one interpretation of the archaeological evidence regarding the arrivals of the first people into the Americas. New evidence comes to light in periodic fashion, and this interpretation might be adjusted in the future. First, I will discuss the traditional model of the arrival of the first Americans, and then provide an updated model that answers important questions about dates of many sites. So let's start with the traditional interpretation of the initial peopling of the Americas, which is very likely outdated, yet still prevalent in much media. Let's roll back the landscape to the end of the last glacial period about 13,000 years ago. At the end of the last glacial period, known as the Late or Upper Pleistocene, there are two major geological differences in North America as compared to today. First, the Americas are connected to Asia by a land bridge here. This is the Bering Land Bridge. The land masses are connected. Humans, plants, and animals can migrate and pollinate between the two continents. It's important to note that the Bering Land Bridge is not a narrow corridor. The continents are connected and humans moving from modern Russia to modern Alaska would not be walking like on a tight rope across a narrow strip of land. The region is so huge that a person would not even understand that they were going from one continent to another. Thus, today's Bering Sea is transformed 13,000 years ago into the Bering Land Bridge. Also, a big difference from then till today geologically is the glaciers of the Laurentide Ice Sheet dominate almost all of modern Canada and large portions of the northern United States. This geography provides the conditions for the traditional Clovis first theory of the peopling of the Americas. It is called Clovis after spear points found in Clovis, New Mexico that many believed represented the first Native Americans. So here is the Clovis first theory, which holds that the only way for people to get from Asia to America was over the Bering Land Bridge near the end of the last glacial period. What this theory has going for it um, is that the time seems to be right for these conditions. Some 13,000 years ago, Asia is connected to America and there is an ice-free corridor through Canada leading to North America and South America. In this traditional model, the Clovis First model, people walked from Asia to America and moved through the ice-free corridor and then down the continent. Thus, Clovis First theory puts the first peoples into the Americas about 13,000 years ago. Advocates maintain that a migration before this period is not possible due to geology. If we wind the geologic clock backwards to almost 18,000 years ago or so, during the last glacial maximum, there is no open passageway through Canada, so the path is blocked. Thus, according to the Clovis First theory, it is impossible for the first Americans to arrive before this corridor is opened. So no humans before about 13,000 years ago in North America. However, there is a problem. The oldest known sites in the Americas are not found in Alaska or Northwest Canada, which would be expected if the first populations moved through an ice-free corridor there. Rather, radiocarbon dates from numerous sites across North and South America predate the Clovis era. Meadowcroft Rock Shelter in western Pennsylvania is 19,000 years old, and possibly older. Likewise, Cactus Hill in Virginia has radiocarbon dates going back 15,000 years. Further south provides even more startling dates. Pedra Ferrada in Brazil has incredibly old dates, some of which go into very deep prehistory before 30,000 years ago. Monte Verde in Chile also has very early dates. So how can this be? We will actually turn to Australia. An archaeological site in Australia at Lake Mungo confirms that people were in Australia at least 40,000 years ago. The only way to get to Australia from Asia was through Oceania, even during the low seas of the last glacial period as shown here. Travel from Asia through Oceania to Australia requires boats. 
This startling discovery pushed boat technology way back into prehistory. These aren't large galleons or sail ships, but rather canoes. However, the arrival of peoples into Australia before 40,000 years ago by boat provides answers to large question marks in the Americas. With the arrival of people in Australia in deeper prehistory over 40,000 years ago, suddenly sites in North America like Meadowcroft no longer seem out of place. Let's slide back over to the Americas. The use of boats in deep prehistory means that we no longer have to wait for an ice-free corridor to emerge through Canada 13,000 years ago. A glacial impasse over the land is no longer an issue, which means we can push the dates backward to the glacial high points like 20,000 years ago or more. With canoe technology, we can now imagine ancient peoples following the coastline from Siberia to Alaska, and then following the coast down the west side of the Americas and then up the eastern side. Boats provide humans with enhanced opportunities to procure food. Boats provide the benefits of water resources like fish while also giving people the opportunity to find fruits, nuts, and land animals along the coast. The movement of prehistoric populations through the Americas could have been quite fast with canoes, and this explains how sites like Meadowcroft in Pennsylvania have exceptionally old dates. It also means that the oldest Native American sites might be uh, on ancient coastlines that are now underwater due to the rising sea levels at the end of the last glacial period. The old radiocarbon dates, such as 19,000 years ago in Pennsylvania, likely point to the reality of human occupation in the Americas in deep prehistory at least 20 or 25,000 years ago.